my name is Johan Leva, uh, and I'm the vocalist in Nonexist. I started out with some smaller bands in the 80s, some punk hardcore bands and thrash metal. Then it got serious somehow and I uh, formed Carnage. Uh, then we had Furball in the early 90s. Then I quit Furball and they transformed into another band called Wonderflow, which I wasn't part of. And then, like one year later, I was uh, asked if I was interested to you know, start a band called Arch Enemy. It was in late 95. And then I was there until the fall of 2000. And then uh, I got into non-exist and hers almost the same year. I think it was in 2001, so it means 14 years ago as of now. Wow, that wasn't yesterday. And then I have some other projects as well. I'm doing some guest vocals sometimes if bands ask me for guest vocals, I you know most likely say yes to it. Almost one year after I had to leave Arch Enemy, this was in 2001, I was working with them in the War Music record store here in town. The owner, Wes, was um, Wes was. <laughs> uh, he was uh, totally hooked about the idea to uh, form a band, like a super band or whatever, with a guitar virtuoso. And, and he got this young talent called Joan Reynolds. He called him JJ, like JJ, JJ, like JJ. JJ was gonna make it in Japan, JJ. Yeah, but it's JR actually, but never mind. We, we met up and, uh, you know, we discussed uh, to form this project called Nonexist. And uh, he was already at that time in Andromeda, yeah. They released the first album there in through War Music Records. He sent me songs on CDRs and uh, I, I started to write lyrics. I think I wrote all of the lyrics on the first album actually. Yes, I did. I had a lot of time. Haha. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I was you know, eager to get started with a new band as soon as possible. The funny thing, however, is, was that first we had Nonexist. I don't know which one came first, but also formed uh, the other band called Hers at the same time. What attracted me? Well, I, I felt I had, a, I was, of course, I, I was uh, restless. I had uh, lots to, you know, lots to give. I had I, I wanted to you know get busy with something, and then I got busier than I could ever could ever imagine actually <laughs> with two bands all of a sudden you know making uh, writing <laughs> basically writing uh, lyrics for two albums at the same time that was uh, overwhelming to say the least. To be part of the the scene or whatever for so many years, I was counting. It's been like close to 30 years or something. So many things have changed. It's totally different now. I don't know how, however, how, uh, for example, new bands how they are working to, today, nowadays. I mean, uh, if people form bands anymore, I don't know how it's working, actually. But then, back in the days, we got together and we re got this rehearsal place and we rehearsed, we looked forward to it so much. We went to rehearsal 
to uh, to rehearse, for example, on weekends. This is, for example, Carnage, because we, our drummer at that time, he was based in another town, so he could only rehearse with us on weekends. So, But that was something we looked forward to very much. And then, when we felt, you know, the, that the songs were good enough or whatever, and we felt, you know, we had to get it out there, so we, we booked an appointment in, in some studio and... and um, to record the stuff and uh, make demo cassettes and you know send it out and spread the word. It was like a like a forest fire at that time. If you send this demo cassette, demo tape to someone and you include some flyers, you know, and then he uh, send it to to the next person, you know, and the word is spreading and the music is spreading like. Crazy! It was amazing times, actually. Lots of trading, lots of you know, trading tapes and records and shirts and stickers or whatever. It's good times. So I don't know really anything about the the difference from now and then. Some somehow I I hope they uh, carried the same uh, spirit as we did back then, but I doubt it. I I have no idea. I don't know, actually. But in my dreams, that would be cool. I don't like it, of course, because uh, musicians and other artists, you know, imagine, you know, a, for example, a painter who's been, you know, painting on a canvas for, you know, for eternity. This could actually happen, you know, if, imagine if you could download a picture of his work <laughs> and then you could. And in the future there will be, you know, printers that print out with a canvas to make it a perfect, you know, flawless copy. And then you can sell it, you know, it would be fucked up. Of course I don't like illegal, you know, illegal downloading, but I have, to I have a, you know, s I'm not stupid, I have total understanding because I had a period in my life when I was actually poor as a church rat. So, of course I used the opportunities to get hold of uh, music and movies and stuff, but it's not, you know, something... I don't even have it anymore on any... Um, I don't use it like that anymore, so... We started working together like 14 years ago, as I said earlier. It's been great. It's a, first of all, he's a great friend of mine. He's a very good friend. Both him and his, uh, his girlfriend, Sophia, who's doing the artwork for our uh, last two albums, actually. I really enjoy working with him because he's really energetic. He's really, you know ambitious, he wants the best, he's, uh, he's always curious. I'm a bit, you know, I'm 10 years older, so I'm a bit, you know, ah, you know, it's okay, you know, it sounds okay, you know, when he's, uh, when, for example, when we're recording uh, my vocals, I'm like, ah, it's okay, because I'm so lazy, or something, I don't know, lazy or comfortable, or I don't know. But it's been uh, one hell of a ride, for sure. On the first album we were, he was like 20 and I was like 30 something, plus something, you know. And, uh, but still we managed to put a pretty fucking awesome album together. The first one, yeah, I like it so much. I'm really proud of that one. But he, he, he's been a really, you know, great support for me, directing me and stuff. Recording the vocals for the last two albums, you know, it's it always pushes me more and more and more and the, the English has to be perfect and it's great. I like that. Great guy. And also, you know, outside of the music stuff, we, we get along really well. So we have this almost the same kind of humor, kind of sense of humor and, you know, always a good time when we meet and hang out like buddies, good friends, having a good time. So... 
it's a pleasure and a, an honor actually to have a such a you know good good person and a fantastic musician. Yeah, that's what life's all about actually. To have good people around you. First, the one and only show we did in uh, Gothenburg, and uh, we got our shit together and we uh, played this festival called uh, Scorch Thundra, arranged by uh, some peeps at our re record label at that time, uh, Pivotal. It was awesome. We were the f f f f f second band out that night. Yeah, of course we rehearsed a lot of, you know, a lot of times and feeling pretty, you know, cool about everything and then, you know, I, I remember, you know, <laughs> two hours or something backstage I was like, no, I, <laughs> I can't do this, it's impossible. I got, you know, the, uh, the fucking shivers. <laughs> Almost shed myself. But okay, that's in the past. Yeah, it's always like that. Two songs and then everything is fine. Just have to get, go through this, the first song and the second song and then on the third, it's okay. So that was a memory for life, indeed. Yeah. But we have uh, we've had a uh, lot of good times with Non-Exist, so I have a lot of more great memories. Thank you, by the way. I'm glad you liked the first album. It was fucking cool. I really like it still to this day. The new album, Throne of Scars, it's a, a, a natural uh, step. I mean, it's uh, basically considering, you know, taking consideration the, the years that passed between the two first, I mean the first album and the second album was like 10 years or something. And these were songs we, uh, that Johan Reynolds kept and, you know, until we were ready again. I should, uh, you know, explain the, the style of the new album like a natural uh, mix of the um, first and second one. The second one was, you know, it was brutal melodic and stuff, but the new one has got a, another edge to it, I think. More like the first album, more raw. Um, you know, I don't give a shit kind of uh, full force, straight ahead. Kick some ass, kick some ass, kick some ass. It's got a raw edge to the sound. It's faster, you know. I could go, you know, total full of cliches here, but it's faster, it's more brutal, it's heavier, you know, you're gonna, you know, it's gonna blow your fucking mind. But it's not like that. <laughs> I, I, I guess. Expect the unexpected, or like some wise man said, if you like the, you know, the other albums, you will like this one too, so. I totally despise and hate to repeat myself. I don't know why. I feel like uh, I'm, I'm trapped in some kind of limbo. I don't want to repeat myself if I use the same phrase or whatever, like two times, it's a disaster. Go to death row <laughs> and wait for your punishment. But, you know, it's uh, like a psychological thing. But what inspired my lyric writing this time? For the songs I wrote lyrics to, I mean, not all of them, Reinholds made, actually most of them, I guess. I got some inspiration, some afternoon I came home from work, I was like, oh, I've got to check this Rasputin video uh, on YouTube, and I was like, I found so much stuff I wanted to use. Then I started writing lyrics, because I have a really, you know, huge problem to write lyrics nowadays. 
I had to get fed by something. I'm, for example, a sucker for uh, disaster movies, you know, like Day After Tomorrow, 2012, and Armageddon, and you name it. I love it. The Road, post-apocalyptic epic stories. So I put some of that in, for example, Rodents of War, which was, by the way, a song that I also composed, that Reynolds later rearranged and made it perfect. Reynolds writes about a lot of deep stuff, about psychological stuff, mind stuff. I'm more like, nowadays I'm like, try to get that feeling from the 80s, like some war and, you know, Something we never had here in Sweden for 200 years, but we can write about it and, you know, feel safe. I can't just, you know, write uh, about dungeons and dragons or like fantasy stuff and make things up. I have to, you know, have some kind of background or experience or it, it, it has, has to have made a, you know, quite a huge impression on me or whatever. I hope this answers your question. Time for uh, the third album now from Nonexist. That's my one and only band nowadays. I used to be in hers a few years ago, but I, I, I found after five albums that we, you know, because I felt we could, you know, put any further. But with Nonexist, it's still, you know, it's still moving. Check out the new album for, for sure. You will, you will really appreciate it. Check it out and see what you think. If you like it, go buy it. If you don't, just listen to it somehow. I hope to see you out there. All of you. Just be good to each other, okay? It pays off. It doesn't have to do anything about karma and that bullshit. Just be good and do what you believe. Have a good life and uh, be careful what you wish for. Over and out. Peace and love. <coughs>